guys, Steve Davis here, Stillwater Woodcraft, down here on the Stillwater River today doing a little bit of fishing in the 18th century style. So what I thought I'd do is go over a little bit of the fishing kit that I carry and how I use it. So uh, hopefully you know we catch a couple fish. It's been raining for a couple days. River looks about like uh, coffee, so you know it'll be what it is. Uh, why they call it fishing and not catching I guess so we will move the camera around here a little bit and uh, go over my basic kit okay guys here is my basic kit I uh, you know when I not carrying my shooting bag or something down here in the summertime I just carry a simple uh, haversack I keep my kit in this tin here small tin you open it up I have stuck a piece of wool to the inside of the lid to uh, hold some hooks and I've also put a piece of wool in the bottom to cut down on the rattling the stuff jingling around in there so here stuck to the lid I have an assortment of hooks now these are all spade end hooks they have no eye on them okay and there's a special way you tie them on and we'll go over that later in the video so I have a uh, assortment of smaller hooks here okay um, generally around here I have a better chance of catching some smaller fish uh, especially out of the river you know a lot of bluegills uh, rock bass things like that now down in here also, I do have some larger hooks. This one's rigged up on a linen leader ready to be set as a bank line. Now I'll use these larger hooks uh, for, you know, setting bank lines for some uh, catfish or uh, some of these gigantic carp that run in this river. But I generally don't use them on my hand line or uh, my cane pole. Okay, so here is my hand line on its winder. It's just a piece of wood with some notches in the end, and it's cut so it will fit in that tin. Now my main line on this hand line is a tarred line, okay? It's a line covered in tar. In the 18th century, this was referred to as cod line, and it was generally hemp or linen with a uh, tar coating on it. It made the uh, line last a lot longer. Then on this, I have a sinew leader, okay? Um, you know, your leaders can be as long as a piece of sinew that you can strip off like a deer backstrap or something. And it's a finer line, it's a little less spooky uh, than the heavier cod line. And on here I just have a uh, simple split shot for a weight. Uh, it's just the same shot I use in my Fowler, just uh, got a little split in it with a knife. And a smaller hook on there. This thing's kind of rigged up ready to go. That way if I happen by something I can stop and fish a piece of beeswax in here now this is important to have uh, one to get your hooks to stay on the line and like I said we'll go over that a little bit later and another to wax your line to keep it from soaking up a bunch of water now for a couple floats in here I have a couple different options just a piece of regular cork and here is a uh, gall you know, like you find on a piece of uh, old goldenrod or something, um, be, you know, the stem will come up and it'll have a gall in it from uh, bugs. So these make great fishing uh, floats. You just snap them off so you got something to tie on to. Then down the bottom of here also, I have, uh, uh, here's some medium sized uh, steel hooks or iron hooks I have down in here these were made by Jim Jacobs um, 
these other hooks are made out of needle wire. So just to uh, clarify, I also have a little bundle of sinew that's prepared for leaders. And this is something I just learned how to make this past weekend at Martin Station uh, with a guy named Paul Jones who owns Historic Angling Enterprises. Sells all manner of 18th century fishing equipment. And he gave a really good talk on uh, fishing and fishing equipment. And this is a horsehair line, okay? It is actually made out of uh, the tail hairs of a horse. And this line I have made up here is about nine foot long or so, I'm guessing. And it actually only took me about 15 minutes to make, so it's not that bad to make. Um, we're going to cover that in a separate video on its own. So, that's in the bottom of there. And I just, uh, you know, fit all this stuff in here, however you can. Now, if you look at, say, the contents of my fishing kit versus some um, existing examples of period kits, such as George Washington's fishing kit, who I will try to slide a picture of in right now. Okay, you can see in that fishing kit, it is pretty much the same as uh, what I'm carrying here. This is also a piece of linen line that I picked up from uh, Historic Angling Enterprises also. Uh, just this weekend, it's still in the hank I bought it in. And it is coated in wax. And, uh, you know, it's good to have some extra line. Uh, you can make some uh, bank lines, whatever, out of this. Re-rig your pole. Um, now, the uh, common 18th century form of linen line is some stuff called cutty hunk. And it is very hard to get, and when you can get it, you're going to pay some money for it. So, the best uh, thing is, uh, you know, just some wax linen line, or uh, hemp line, or... Uh, you know, maybe some sinew you made up yourself for an improvised line. Now this is just a horn container, which I made. Uh, it was a uh, originally going to be a powder horn, and when I drilled it, I drilled out the back side. So I just made a container out of it. It's got a lid that pops open. And in there, I just throw whatever I find for bait, okay? Then you take this toggle throw it around the strap on your shooting bag or your haversack and just hang it right there on your bag so it's easy to get to. Um, this is just something I made. It was not made off of any period example or anything. It was just uh, made out of necessity. So I think that's period myself. Also, when I got the chance, uh, maybe I'm in a canoe or... Uh, you know, just coming down the river, um, you know, where I'm not walking a lot, I'm going to bring this jointed uh, cane pole. Okay, it's just the same thing that everybody's seen a cane pole. And, uh, you know, it's uh, perfectly period correct. Or just a cut piece of river cane or a willis branch or uh, any kind of stick, you know, that's flexible and won't break under the pressure of whatever fish you're going to catch. So, they, you know, that just makes life a little easier. And, uh, you know, it's not something I'm going to carry if I'm on a trek. I'll just use my hand line. But if I'm going specifically for fishing or, like I said, riding in my canoe or something, by gosh, I'm going to bring that pole because it, it really, uh, you know, to me is uh, a lot better than just the hand line. But hand line will get it done just the same. So, let's... Uh, move around here again and I will uh, get to showing you a little bit of how I rig this stuff up. Okay, I wanted to do a uh, just a quick look at how I rig a cane pole or just a pole I cut in the woods, you know, to use for fishing. Okay, now you'll see a lot of people will cut their pole 
and then just tie their cordage to the end of the pole and use that for fishing and uh, I'm sure that works pretty good uh, the way I was taught to do it by you know uh, my granddad and stuff was to make your line twice as long as the pole you're using tie your line to the butt end of the pole that you got your hand on okay then come up to the end with it you're fishing at the end you're going to have your line on tie just a clove hitch in the end of it and loop it over that pole and then bring it down to your tackle okay why you want to do that instead of just tying it to the end is if you can see the end of that pole you notice it's broke off that little loop isn't there anymore that's because it's been broke off by a fish so if it breaks off on the end and all your line and terminal tackle and stuff tied to that end now you don't have it anymore plus you lost the fish so if you tie it to the butt end first if the pole breaks you still got the line okay now sitting down and making 20 feet of cordage for a fishing line that's a lot of work you don't want to lose it so uh, I suggest this method myself uh, do whatever works for you but this works really good for me uh, my dad my granddad everybody else so uh, it can't be wrong. Alright, let's get to uh, rigging the uh, terminal end of this up. Okay, let's talk about these spade ended hooks, okay? Um, obviously, there's no eye in them to put the line through and tie a knot like you would a modern hook. So, this kind of uh, seems to screw with a lot of people just because they're not used to using this style, but it's really easy to tie this on and make it secure, okay? Now it's real hard to see that small like horsehair line and a little bitty you know bluegill size hook on video. So I made a big hook and we'll use a piece of uh, line, you know big line so we can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Let's move up. And you can see the spade end of one of these hooks. Okay, it'll just be flattened out and it gets wider here. So when we tie our knot down here, it can't slide off the shank. So you'll have your shank here. So what you want to do is take some beeswax and just rub it on this shank. It's going to help your knot hold on. You're going to take your line. Just put a quick overhand in it here, just like this. Take your hook. lay that loop against the shank okay like this get my fingers out of the way then you're going to take the tag into your line and just go through that loop going through the loop okay so you have it wrapped let me get in the camera up and you just pull that tight. What that will do is lock that bottom string in there. And there, it won't pull up past the spade now. So, it's really easy to tie these on there. They hold just as secure in my experience as an eyed hook as long as they're tied right. So, easy as that. Okay, looking back on that video, that might not have been the clearest explanation, so we're going to do her again. Okay, we're going to take our hook, wax it, right? Our line, throw a loop in it. Shank the hook, lay it on top. Then we're going to take this line through that loop, working our way down the shank. Take our standing in and just pull all that tight. And there, it won't slide over that spade in now. Okay, let's talk about the terminal end or the tackle 
on the end of this line just how I rig it up I tie on the uh, hook just like we uh, talked about earlier and then if I'm going to use a weight I got some uh, split shot here okay it's just a piece of shot like you use in your fowler you take a knife and split it just a little bit so you can get the line in there there's uh, no magic there okay now if I want to use a float I have just a piece of cork okay just like would plug a bottle you take a knife put a little slit in it about halfway through the cork and you just pull that line through there okay just like that it'll stay on there pretty good you can adjust it easily now if you're going to use one of these gulls get this gull out here you're going to use one of these gulls. Let's take that cork off there. So we have this gull, okay? It's just got the stem sticking out the bottom. What we can do throw two loops, pass one behind the other, forming a clove hitch, and just clove hitch that right on there. Pull that tight. Okay, that line will cut in that stem a little bit, and the roughness of that stem will hold it on. I'll leave this one on here. We'll go ahead and use the wasp gull for uh, fishing today. So, that's how I rig that terminal end on my cane pole. And it's the same way on my hand line. It just going to my hand and not a pole. And that hand line, you know, is exactly what I use when I'm just out on a trek or something. I just rig it to a pole that I cut. So it's the same deal here. Um, really simple really easy rough fishing uh, you know fishing is a pretty good way to supply yourself with meat while you're out and about um, you know of course you're down at the water's edge where it concentrates the rest of the game so it's the uh, perfect place to be so let's give this uh, stuff a quick try here This uh, riverbank's pretty muddy. Standing on here in uh, slick bottom shoes, you know, it's kind of makes me feel like I'm going to take a trip into the water here. But I have a uh, pretty large carper out here swimming around. I'd like to hook into one of them on a hand line. That'd be pretty sweet. But since we're on video, there's no way that's going to happen. Um, anyways, you know, the, uh, the advantage, I think, of a pole over a hand line is just a lot easier to flip this in and out with. Um, you know, you can reach out over some logs and stuff and fish. Easy to pull up and throw back out in the current, you know, as it flows down. But, you know, I have caught a lot of hand fish just on a hand line. We're going to sit here and keep fishing for a while, see if we catch something. I thought I had a little bite there. Either way, you know, we get uh, hooked into something here. We'll see if we can get it on film. So hang with me.
creek chub or something. I'm gonna take the bait all the way. See that wasp gall makes a pretty good float. You can find them pretty easily if you just keep your eye out. <laughs> All you're going to do is take my bait. Okay, we're not having much luck down here fishing. We're gonna keep trying, but I just wanted to, you know, give you guys a look at my basic fishing kit, a little bit of how I use it. I want to keep at it here and uh, see if we can get something on the hook. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been Steve Davis, Stillwater Woodcraft. Thank you for your views, your support, and your comments. We'll see you on the next one.